We saw some protesters get in the face of some of the National Guard and investigated the living conditions. They gave us this 135 page report with their findings. Inspectors found a heavy buildup of dirt. We were following them right as they got onto I-277. Then right behind us, we saw CMPD in uh, riot gear follow us and we just wanted to step aside of the road just to be safe. When she looked at her camera feed, she saw two thieves. In fact, a lot of times, Drivers don't even go the speed limit to avoid becoming a victim of a car break in. Always bring valuables like your wallet with you wherever you go. But if you do have valuables you can't take with you, keep them out of plain sight. The line for Trump's rally started forming late last night and went on for blocks around campus. But his supporters weren't the only ones in line. Protesters disguised themselves and snuck in. Breweries cannot sell food or have a tap room for beer tasting if they're in industrial areas. But if the ordinance passes Monday, they could set up shop with both of those in business districts. But right now, we actually have a line of, of just regular people guarding the police officers from some of these protesters. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio. It's pretty hot out here. I'm going to go ahead and take a dip in the water. It was about a year and a half ago when Dylan Roof was walked out of this door in handcuffs. I'm told that tomorrow it could actually be uh, a lot tougher to contain this fire. Why is that? Fortunately, nobody was hurt. I say fortunately because this is a very heavily trafficked area, especially on CIAA weekend. There's cars sometimes that will go 70 miles per hour. This has been a problem area for some time. For neighbors living along Park Road Extension, speeding drivers have caused frustration for years. This is a neighborhood. What are you doing? Like, just slow down. People do speed. Uh, they, they really don't care who's out here. They just come up and down here like it's a drag strip. The I mean, constant speeding made Noonie yeah. Schwert jump into action. Oh, I put that sign up there for them. After her neighbor's dog was hit and killed by speeding car Friday, she made him put up these signs up and down Park Road Extension demanding drivers to slow down. This is our neighborhood. You know, they wouldn't want us to go through their neighborhood and, and, and follow them, tailgate them. We have a neighborhood that is coming together as a community now to try to do something about this. Neighbors say drivers typically go well above the 30 mile per hour speed limit on this road, but since these signs went up this past Friday, they said they've noticed a difference. In fact, a lot of times drivers don't even go the speed limit. And I've been here for 12 years and I haven't seen people this much people slow down. We had our radar gone up for much of the afternoon. No cars even traveled 40 miles per hour. Since these homemade signs went up, CMPD has also stepped up. They put up these trailers that detect speed. Neighbors say they're happy to see these changes, hoping it means lives are saved. The biggest concern that we have is with a child getting their dog and the child getting struck. Check my bag. I'm telling you, I don't have anything. What started as an owner's concern over a possible shoplifter quickly escalated into a physical altercation moments later. Are you serious? You see the owner of Misha Beauty, Sung Ho Lim, kick the woman, <laughs> then take her to the ground and put her in a chokehold. Disturbed. Disgusting. This video has been circulating on social media. And on Sunday, community leaders and customers held a protest calling for a boycott of the store. He took it upon himself to treat her in the ways that no woman should be treated. In fact, no person should be treated. I will never, ever come in this store again. Lim talked with protesters, apologizing to them. That's a whole my, uh, my fault. But protesters say this apology may not be enough. Charlotte Mecklenburg's NAACP chapter, as well as national civil rights activist John C. Barnett, showed up to the protest, saying the possible racial implications in this confrontation cannot be ignored. It reminds me of any historical attack on black people. Whatever the case may be, we do know that, uh, you know, he can't be keeping someone in a chokehold. But Lim says this had nothing to do with race. He tells WBTV the camera phone footage doesn't show her stealing from his store. He filed a police report telling officers she stole eyelashes. However, no charges have been filed. One man who works in a store near Misha Beauty says this is not how you handle a shoplifter. When I think they may be stealing, I mean, as far as stores, um, most of them have cameras in them. Lim says he should not have taken things this far. I wasn't kind of crazy, you know. Uh, no matter what the reason, but I feel very sorry to, the, to, to her. But for protesters, this woman could have gotten killed. They don't think he understands how serious his actions were. When he was choking her, he was almost choking her to death. Methamphetamine, crack cocaine, heroin. In Lincoln County, they're all over the whole county. It's no mystery there's a drug problem. I have a growing epidemic of heroin and, and meth. So how does the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office tackle this problem? When we do surveillance. Lieutenant John Probst, head of the narcotics unit, says it usually begins with tips from neighbors. After research, the unit will use surveillance and other techniques, as well as conduct undercover drug buys from dealers to start building a case. They continue their research of dealers and their associates for months, even up to a year, 
before securing warrants and making arrests. Basically, it's a waiting game. This video is from one of those surveillance missions the next day. And peel out. <laughs> the narcotics unit arrests a different dealer they had been watching for months. Then that will eliminate um, certain pockets and certain areas to make the quality of life better for those citizens. In 2015, the narcotics unit investigated 270 cases, making arrests in 181 of those cases. So far this year, they've investigated 225 cases, making arrests in 162 of them. We're never going to eliminate everything, um, but uh, it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process. It's a war and we're fighting it. Just about every week, the narcotics unit makes several drug arrests, thanks in large part to their surveillance efforts. But Sheriff Carpenter and Lieutenant Probst say more needs to be done than just bring the offenders to jail in order to really address the drug problems in this county. We're going to continue to seek out the, the dealers, the sellers of it, but there's also these folks that are addicted. Neighbors are fully aware of this addiction problem. Well, it's present everywhere, like I said before. You know, we're not crazy to think that. We'd be crazy to think that it wasn't present. Celeste Frazier isn't alone in thinking this. In a community health survey conducted by the Lincoln County Health Department, residents said substance abuse was a top issue. Since 2015, there have been 20 drug overdose deaths in a county where the population is just over 80,000. We're in the awareness and the advocacy piece. We know that the prevention piece is not something that we can really touch on right now. The Lincoln County Health Department receives money each year from the state's Healthy Community Grants. For the first time, they will be using this money for substance abuse, which has been a choice for this grant money's use only within the last five years. We're able to have counselors on site here at the health department two days a week. And Carpenter hopes this help for the addicts will soon drive dealers out of the county. If you cut out the addict, you're going to cut out the seller. In Lincoln County, Christian Flores, WBTV on your side.